Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Greg Brownerville Dimension. Well, here while back in Dallas, Texas, where I live, on April 8th, to be precise, we had a total solar eclipse. This is the first one I've ever experienced in my life, and there was all kinds of hype running in, in the run-up to it. Dallas was in the so-called path of totality, a phrase I had never heard until this eclipse, and I heard it quite a lot in the run-up. And, you know, I was a little skeptical because it's been my experience that when there's a ton of hype about something like this, it doesn't live up to it. But in this case, the eclipse really did live up to the hype. And I mean, I think even surpass it. it. It was the feeling I had the day it happened. Well, let me set the scene for you. It, I was on campus because I, I teach right after the, the eclipse happened. Like I, I have a class at 2 o'clock on Monday, and this was a Monday. And so I was on campus, and a bunch of students and faculty and guests were all out on the green grass on the campus waiting for the eclipse to happen. And when it did, it was, it was astonishing. It, there, there was, it was so beautiful that it, it kind of silenced the soul the way great art does. It, you forgot about hype. It was just you were in the experience, you, you were in, deep in this experience, in the quick of this experience of sublimity. And it really did, as I say, not just live up to the high, but surpass it. And right after it, I went into my classroom where I have a fantastic class this semester, one of the best classes I've ever had, just a, a wonderful group of students, student poets. And so I decided that what we would do is write about what we had just experienced. I mean, this is 15 minutes after the eclipse. We're in the classroom, and the students wrote about what it was like to experience this, and a few of them were willing to read what they had just written. And so this is a kind of document, not just the eclipse itself. We've, you've, you can find photographs of the eclipse but the way it moved people who experienced it. And so I know a lot of people, a lot of y'all were not in the path of totality, so you missed out on this. So I thought it might be interesting to hear from these students who, had, who wrote about this thing while it was fresh. And so I had audio equipment in the classroom set up, so the rest of this episode will be just audio. You'll just be alone with the voices and words of these talented, insightful students who wrote about their experience of the eclipse. Here it goes. My name is Jordan Young. I'm currently a junior at SMU. Um, I watched the eclipse with two, with three of my friends, um, two of them whom are in this room currently, um, and that was really fun. We also spent a lot of time making fun of people who were actively looking up at the freaking eclipse before totality, and also were just wearing sunglasses, because that's not how that works. Um, and yeah, we, it was mostly people watching, I think, for us <laughs> before the actual eclipse, and people kept cheering and things like that, like as, it, as the clouds would part, and I would be really confused, because I wouldn't understand why they were cheering. Like, it made sense. <laughs> It was also like, oh, well, that's not really what's happening, but sure, I guess. Um, I wrote a small poem about the experience, and hopefully it's good. If it's not, that's okay, too. Okay, eclipse, because I'm creative. It's a little odd that the eclipse was not the most amazing thing in that moment. I, find it, I found it more astonishing to be sat on the grass on my friend's Tupac hoodie and eating wings she bought me. I could only laugh as one cursed another for being more able to shoot this moment. Had I been alone, I probably wouldn't have cared. I can't stand to be alone in a swarm. I could not be asked to witness this rare meeting, this momentary companionship, this lapse of solitude on my own. A few years ago, I really would have been alone. Yet my orbit has found me here with these people at this time. What a sight it is, the wide mouth darkness of a laugh surrounded by the glow of teeth. This midday night feels all aglow. This light is precious, 
and I don't mean the crown of the sun. Hi, my name is James Yerk, and I'm a senior computer science major here at SMU. The experience of the eclipse was rather interesting because it kind of started before today because I had multiple family members who lived down in Houston came up here to be with my family during the eclipse. So we had dinner with them on Friday and then we had dinner with them on Sunday night as well. But it was just kind of a nice time to get to talk to them again because I, I wasn't with them during the eclipse because I had to be down here. But just having that time to spend with them before was a nice bonus, I suppose, that you could tack on to there being an eclipse is the extra time with the family. Today was an interesting day, though, because technically I have class before and after the eclipse, technically during the eclipse, and my 1230 class would not cancel. She instead moved it to over Zoom. So I walked into the classroom because I'm like, I have to be on campus anyway. I'm like, I'm going to log into the professor computer in this classroom and turn on the Zoom meeting that way and just have the projection of the PowerPoint she's going over on the giant screen. And I was the only person in that classroom, which is kind of an eerie feeling because then you realize how few people are moving about the building anyway, because everyone was already outside looking at the eclipse, even when you just got a little bit of a sliver of darkness going over the sun. But she said she'd let us out by 1.30, and we got let out by about 1.15, so I had plenty of time to go eat lunch and go print out all the poems that I had to print to hand out people for the workshop that we're also, I guess, not doing today. <laughs> but I suppose then I got to go watch the eclipse, and I'll read here what I wrote about it. I feel this slightest twinge in my eyes still, like when you forget to grab your earplugs before a band rehearsal. I tried to be responsible with the glasses, but sometimes I can't help myself. Maybe the clouds were decent cover, but I probably still got a little bit of eye damage. Worth it, though. They don't hurt, really, so maybe it's fine. The things they tell you about what it's like don't do it justice. They say it gets dark like twilight or night, but when you start to see the streetlights coming on, you realize that they meant it. Maybe it was some divine inspiration that cut off all of our internet during the eclipse, but it made sure we stayed focused not only on this sublime work of nature and luck, but on the people around us that we shared it with. In the moments before, during, and after totality, people were cheering and clapping, and I thought, who are you clapping for, God? I don't really know what the answer is or if we should even try to. What I do know is that we are immensely lucky to have this world and our moon just far enough away to give us the tides, but close enough that we still have eclipses, so that just for a moment, we can all come together and remember how beautiful the universe is. Hi, my name is uh, Trey. I'm an English major and I'm a senior at SMU, and we just watched the eclipse. Uh, I had the immense luck to be able to watch it with my roommate who I've had for all four years of college. Uh, and I'm moving like basically right after the semester ends. So it's like probably one of the last times I'm gonna get to have like a really special moment to hang out with him. So that was really cool. But uh, I'm just gonna read you, I wrote three little haikus that I'm gonna read. So the first one is, they're all named after songs that deal with an eclipse. The first one is called uh, Black Hole Sun. Not total darkness, but a cigarette burned sun, charred, impermanent. Um, the second one is just eclipse, like the Pink Floyd song. <laughs> a photo of an eclipse is like laughing in nature's face, no? And then my third one is uh, Gotta Do Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Uh, do you think the moon misses the sun? After all, they meet once every never. So, thank you. My name's Ethan. Um, I kind of forgot about the eclipse uh, until like right before it was gonna happen. So, for the first couple minutes, I was just sitting there by myself, just going, oh well. But then, um, it was pretty cool. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. And similar to Trey, I have three haikus here that gradually take it more seriously. 
first. It was dark for like four minutes or something, but it was neat, I guess. The ring was pretty cool, but saying that, I feel like Sauron, you know? In time, I'll tell them the moon devoured the sun and the world was still. Um, hi, I'm Anna Nemchek. I'm also a senior. Um, so I didn't know the eclipse was happening until Friday. Um, because me and my friends went to Sonic and apparently they were giving out free of the, the sunglasses for free if you bought their like special solar drink or whatever. Didn't do that, I actually got my glasses for, for free at the mall, so hell yeah. Um, so I actually saw the clips that happened in 2017, so the poem I wrote is kind of a little bit about both of them, so. In 2017, the world went dark. People drove around like worker bees, escaping their mundane mornings for a celestial afternoon. Three hours were spared for a day, for a day one way, to experience a once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon. In 2024, the world went dark. People flew here like, like ducks migrating for a singular afternoon in the new Texas heat. The promised hidden sun sight almost hidden completely by unwanted forces. Then the winds arrive to pull away the clouds, a sight for sore eyes without the proper eyewear. Through tinted lenses and digital eyes, the spectacle of this lifetime, the, the spectacle of this lifetime showed up in a dark haze or a ring of radiation. Until the end of curiosity, we will continue to watch bodies of power pass by in the light of day. I'm Mackenzie, I'm a junior at SMU, and my family had been like talking about the eclipse coming up for the past few weeks. Like my mom ordered us glasses off of Amazon that were just living in our like living room table drawer. Um, and when I was driving from home back to school yesterday, I realized as I was like pulling out of my garage that I actually forgot to grab them, so had to run back inside, and then my mom texted me. She was like, oh my god, I forgot to give you them. And I was like, oh no, I got them. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but it's funny, because we bought like five pairs of glasses, because originally, I think my sibling and their boyfriend were going to watch it with my parents, um, but they're still out of town right now, so I don't know what they were gonna do. Um, anyway, I wrote two poems very different from each other about it, so. The only ways I can think to describe it consist of a series of givens or cliches, a ring of light emitting rays in total darkness. No shit, also it wasn't that dark. A blinding beauty, you don't say. A once in a lifetime experience, actually I'm pretty sure the next one is in like 20 years. It was gorgeous, don't get me wrong, I'm just not that creative. And then my other one is, I took this with my bare eyes, said my friend, a rebel without a cause. I ran out of contacts, so I had to sit there with eclipse glasses over my corrective pair, the same as when I see a movie in 3D. Three cars drove across the street, two heading east. Were they chasing it? A couple walking their dog, did it not matter to them? I wondered. I got a picture too, at least. Hi, my name is Divya. I'm a senior at SMU right now. And I just wrote a little sort of poetry, sort of short paragraph about describing my experience with the eclipse. First, it was a dimming of the world. Blue sky appeared overcast from cerulean to murky gray as people stirred and gasped. Through my lenses, I could see a fiery sliver of the sun, as if the crescent moon had been set ablaze in the night sky. Except here, it was the moon that crossed over, like a black iris aligning itself with the bright slera of the sun. The moment of totality. Screw my retinas. I took off my glasses, and the all-seeing, blinding eye bore down into my own. Before, the, ir the iris escaped its seat on the white sun and eventually wandered off back into space behind the blue veil of the sky. 
Hi, I'm Avery. Um, I'm a junior at SMU. I think, well, I'm a very sentimental person, so of course I like read into this whole thing happening today. Um, and I think it just made me think about like how everything had to line up in my life to like see it. And so I kind of wrote about that. And my handwriting is kind of messy, so I might struggle through this, but okay. All right. I was born on March 30th, 2003 in Leesburg, Virginia to a complicated family that liked to pretend simplicity. There was a blizzard on my birthday. I grew up very cowboys and Indian style, rock to rock jumping, June bug summers. We moved from coast to coast, picking up pets and little friends along the way. And somewhere in between a cracked sidewalk, a fifth grade teacher, an apple tree in the backyard, white water, Patricia, Noah's Ark, I turned 18. And I picked a college on the last day that I could. And because I felt like God wanted me to, I picked a university in Dallas, Texas. And I like to call this selective obedience. And even though I hated my roommate, I decided to stay. And so for three years, I've lived like a college girl in the best and worst ways. I call this selective obedience. And that's all to say, I was in the right coordinates and at the right hour today to see, like oil dripped in a circle and set on fire, the moon covered the sun.